Hello, I'm Dr. Sean Phelan. We're here today to talk about TMJ or TMJ dysfunction. And uh, the temporomandibular joint is a condition that can cause popping and clicking or pain with the jaw. It can produce headache, it can produce ear pain, it can even produce dizziness and nausea. It all depends upon how severe the condition is. There can also be a lot of confusion regarding this, this condition and the person winds up wondering whether they've got a muscle problem, whether they've got a joint problem, whether they've got a problem with their teeth. And they will wind up typically self-selecting and sometimes bouncing around between providers trying to find, number one, what the diagnosis is and number two, what the proper treatment is. So do you need to see a dentist? Do you need to see an orthodontist? Do you need to see a chiropractor? Do you need to see an oral surgeon? It really depends on what the diagnosis is, and that's often where the confusion starts. If you do not have a good diagnosis, or if you ever have a hazy diagnosis about what's causing the popping and clicking or other symptoms going on with the, with the face or the head, then you're going to have a hazy outcome and you're going to continue to suffer with this condition on and on. So let's go ahead and clarify what the temporomandibular joint is, what can go wrong with it, and some possible solutions for it if you are suffering from it. So, when we look at the temporomandibular joint, this is a very simple diagram here. And uh, what it shows us are some of the, uh, the structures that are involved with the temporomandibular joint. First of all, we have the jaw itself, or the mandible. And there it shows some of the teeth along the, the mandible itself. And the joint itself is a, an area where the temporal bone is articulating with the mandible. And that's where you get the TM part of the TMJ. The J is simply the joint, so everyone really has two TMJs. They have one on each side here. That's your temporomandibular joints. What we're really talking about here is temporomandibular joint dysfunction. So what can dis become dysfunctional in the temporomandibular joint? Let's look at that. So the popping and the clicking is one of the things we look at. The deviation of the jaw when we open and close it. Is there pain? Is there headaches? Well, the Jaw itself articulates again with the temporal bone, and this, this demonstrates the location of the temporal bone. In between the mandible and the temporal bone is a small fibrocartilaginous disc, and that is, is bonded to the jaw by some ligaments. Popping and clicking can occur if we have a situation where the disc itself becomes disrupted and dislodged from the condyle of the jaw itself. Now you have a situation where the disc can become free-floating. It is attached to the posterior elements of the disc with material that's called retrodiscal tissue. And the retrodiscal tissue is what produces the synovial fluid in the joint to lubricate it. That will hold the, the disc pretty much in place, but what will happen over time often is the disc will actually migrate forward and become adhered and stuck to the anterior portion of the temporal bone. When that occurs, we have a situation where the mandible, as you open and close it, initially it rotates and then it translates forward. And as it translates forward, it has to climb up and over the disc instead of the disc riding with it. And as it does that, you'll notice that initially when you open your jaw, there's no pop. The wider you go, that's where the pop occurs when the jaw slides up and over that, over that disc. So that's one diagnosis, which is disc disruption in the jaw. Another diagnosis is the capsule. The capsule is the ligamentous envelope that wraps around the joint itself, and the capsule itself can become inflamed. The, perfect, the person can have perfectly normal open and closing, they don't have popping, or maybe they do have popping. And the problem is not the disc, even if the disc is dislodged, but the capsule itself, the ligamentous capsule, is inflamed. It's the same ligamentous material that holds your ankle together histologically. When you sprain your ankle, it swells, gets inflamed, becomes uncomfortable. And that can happen in that capsule in the jaw. So the person has jaw pain, they automatically assume they have TMJ or TMJ dysfunction and they really don't. What they have is ligamentous inflammation of the capsule itself. The next thing that can go wrong is the retrodiscal tissue. We mentioned that a moment ago. The retrodiscal tissue is the, is the structures here in the posterior elements of the jaw that connects to the disc. The retrodiscal tissue itself can become inflamed. 
That will typically happen with people that clench all the time or they're bruxing while they're sleeping, contracting the jaw, driving this mandible back up into the temporal bone and squeezing the retrodiscal tissue in between it. When the retrodiscal tissue is inflamed, you wind up with uh, jaw pain again. And if it lasts long enough, what will happen is you'll actually start to get adhesions that form in the jaw inside the joint itself. You'll get uh, vascularization of the adhesions and then they can become sources of pain all themselves if we wind up with a bunch of scar tissue and adhesions in the joint from trauma to the retrodiscal tissue. The next problem that we can you can see occur is problems with the occlusion or problems with the teeth as the teeth are fitting together. So if we look at the jaw itself and we wind up with some of the teeth not lining up properly when the person opens and closes their jaw. What they'll notice is that when they close their jaw, some of the teeth will land early on one side and the jaw will then have to settle into a normal closure. Other problems with occlusion can be the, an underbite. We've, we've heard of that before where the person, when they close their, their lower jaw, the lower uh, teeth are actually too far forward so they have to move their jaw backward in order to close fully. That can cause problems with the TM joint as well. So the last problem that we can see occur with the temporal mandibular joint is really somewhat external and that is the musculature that runs the joint, the muscles that open and close our jaw, move our jaw from side to side for grinding. So the muscles, very big powerful muscles are coming down and they are, they are uh, inserting on the jaw itself and the muscles themselves can become short and tight, short and tight. And like anywhere else in our body with short, tight, contracted muscles, that's going to cause pain sooner or later, whether it's in our necks or in our backs or in our jaw. So really, there's five possibilities when we have temporomandibular joint dysfunction. We've got the disc issue. We've got the musculature. We've got the capsule. We've got retrodiscal tissue. We've got problems with occlusion. Now, some of those conditions we treat in the office. Some of those we identify and refer the person out for treatment. If there's a problem with occlusion, then they're going to need to see their dentist to solve that or an orthodontist to solve that. If there's a problem with retrodiscal tissue inflammation or a capsulitis or musculature that's uh, hypertonic, short and tight, then that's probably something that we can help with here in the office. And probably 70% of the people that I see come in that have diagnoses of TMJ dysfunction are going to be simply those, those cases. They just have short, tight mus musculature, they have retrodiscal inflammation, or they have a capsulitis. And that we can treat fairly, uh, fairly easily. The other condition that would uh, not respond as well to conservative care would be a disc problem where the disc is dislodged. Often if you get rid of the inflammation, the retrodiscal tissue and the capsule and you balance the musculature, the person can go on and live normally with a disc that's displaced and just have a little popping once in a while and they're perfectly fine. They have no pain. They're not necessarily a surgical candidate that is a non-surgical, that is a leave alone condition unless they're at a point where the jaw is locking and not allowing them to open or close. So really, once again, once you have an accurate diagnosis, once you know exactly which one of these structures is, is, is the problem, then you're in a situation where it can be cured. Again, a, a good diagnosis and directed care either in our office or out to the appropriate uh, orthodontist, dentist, or even oral surgeon is the pathway out of chronic temporomandibular joint dysfunction. If we see you in our office, we will typically begin with an examination that allows us to arrive at an accurate diagnosis. We may or may not recommend chiropractic care. It's going to be based upon what we find. If we feel that we can help you, we will let you know. If we feel that we can't help you, we'll also let you know. And we will get you referred to an individual that would be more appropriate for your care. Please visit our website and we will be happy to assist you with your condition. Thank you.